and the greatest. What is up, guys? I'm Celis Williams, aka this Wolf Professor here to educate you on health and social well being. And today, guys, we're talking about training to failure. Should you do it? When should you do it? Is it necessary at all? And how does training to failure apply to the way that I like to set up my programs and my programming? Which, for those of you who don't know, is pretty much based off structured sets and reps and micro loading. For those of you who've been following me or know anything about my programs, or if you've got a program for me, you know that regardless of how your day is set up for that day, that you have a certain set amount of sets and reps on each movement. And that every time you complete all reps on all sets using proper form, then you bump the weight up by the smallest possible increment. So, you know, that's anywhere usually from five to 10 pounds on free weight movements and on machines, whatever the next smallest possible increment is, which is called micro loading. And the reason this is getting brought up is because on Instagram, I had a follower ask me, hey man, question, because I know a lot of people basically crap on training to failure, but even with the program set up like yours, won't I eventually get to a point where I'm going to hit failure? If I keep, you know, increasing the weight every time I get all sets and reps, won't I eventually come to a point where I hit failure? So. To, to get into all this, guys, we have to address a few things. So the first thing, number one, is understanding that anybody that tells you it's never good to train to failure, there's never time to train to failure, is incorrect. They don't understand um, how physiology works, they understand how metabolic fatigue works, and at the same time, people that tell you that you have to train to failure in order to stimulate muscle growth also don't understand how physiology works are also incorrect as far as that. So I'll start off by saying that training to failure is not a necessity. I stated this in videos before. In fact, one of my first videos was over like five of the most common fitness misconceptions and one of them is that you have to train to failure in order to um, get stronger, increase muscle mass. As you guys already know by now, the key to increasing muscle mass and getting stronger is progressive overload just doing a little bit more than what you did last time in some area of the volume whether that's your sets your reps the weight even something like decreasing the rest time that is progressive overload that is the number one defining key of getting stronger or building muscle mass and you can do that without necessarily training to failure you don't have to ever train to failure in order to achieve that in order to accomplish that with that being said that's not to say that training to failure can't sometimes be an adequate tool but we have to first look at how different people define failure. So a lot of people define failure simply as you can no longer get any more reps with that weight, right? Like, like no matter what you do, no matter what you try, even if you break form or try to like, you know, if you're on a bench press and you're looking your butt up, you can't get it. Some people define that as failure. That's true failure. Other people say whenever you get to the point where you can't do any more quality reps with proper form, that that's failure. That's one of the ways that I define failure. Meaning if you get another rep or a couple more reps but your form breaks, I count that as failure. A lot of people, especially more in the powerlifting world, of like coaches who are working on strength, power explosiveness, even if you maintain form, but you start grinding, meaning like your bar speed slows down. So like on a squat or a deadlift or bench, like you're going slower than the tempo they want, they will count that as failure. So understand that these are all different ways that we define failure, right? So for our sake and purposes, when we're talking about the way that I program things specifically, Failure is when you are at the point where you can no longer complete the reps with quality form, which means if you get two, three more reps out, but your form breaks, that is failure. Why? Because the way that I have my structure progressive overload set up is that you complete all reps on all sets using proper form. Now, as far as, um, you know, well, you should never train to failure. This isn't true, guys. The reality is if you're training with anything over five reps, so six reps or more, Training to failure isn't that detrimental in the sense that, you, you're, that you're working metabolic fatigue. If, you're, if the weight is light enough to where you're hitting anything really from like six to 15 reps, that's, rel that's relatively lightweight, which means that you're not so much having to worry about how much it's gonna tax your central nervous system, so much as it's gonna tax metabolic fatigue. Because those of you who've been with me for a while understand that the, that the two ways you can progressively overload is through mechanical tension or metabolic fatigue. And that's what you have to understand, guys, that coming in and just train to failure, like just say, I'm just gonna do as many reps for as many sets as you can randomly with no structure or organization, that's not smart. That is a way to um, burn yourself out, whether it's due to mechanical tension or metabolic fatigue. That is a way to eventually reach a point where you can't recover. Just remember, no matter what you're doing, guys, you always have to keep in mind, how much work can I recover from? Because doing all the work in the world doesn't matter if you can't recover from it. You're not gonna grow the way that you want to. So, with that being said, understand that even when you are, I, even when you are quote unquote working to failure, you still have to have structured progressive overload. For example, um, let's say it's my volume day on Friday, right? And I've got tricep overhead extensions for three sets of 15. 
even let's say I, I hit 15 reps, right? And then I hit 12 reps and then I hit 10 reps. I didn't get all three sets of 15, right? So I failed, right? Cause I, that's all I could get. That's okay. That's beneficial for the mere fact that I still had a certain structure set of reps that I was trying to get. And I'm, even though I didn't hit that, I'm way beyond you know the five rep limit. So all I did was induce metabolic fatigue because once again, the two ways you get stronger are the mechanical tension or metabolic fatigue. Mechanical tension is simply adding weight to the bar. Metabolic fatigue is where you're just doing so much work to where different um, muscle fibers and other thresholds, you know, fast twitch, slow twitch, all have to try to kick in to help you get through the work. And both of these are ways that you can produce muscle growth. But regardless, you have to use progressive overload on both of them. Meaning, even if let's say you're just doing bodyweight, you're just doing push-ups. You, you don't have a certain amount of reps you're trying to hit. You just do three sets of as many reps as you can get. Regardless of what you get on your total reps, the next time you come in and do that, like you're going to have to still progress the overload. So let's say you do three or sets as many as you can. You get like 50, 20, 15. That's fine. But next time you come and do that, you're gonna to wanna to beat that in order to stimulate growth. You still have to progressively overload. So whether you're going it through mechanical tension or metabolic fatigue, even if you are trying to train to failure, you still have to keep track of it to a degree because you have to make sure you're doing a little bit more than you did last time because that is the key to muscle growth. With that being said, when we're talking about working in like, you know, the five rep range or lower, there's not as much benefit to train to failure. Why? Well, because when you're using weights that's heavy enough for you to only get like three to five reps, you're really focusing at that point more on strength or more on power. And you don't want to have to necessarily grind through so much. You want it to be nice, clean, quality reps. Grinding every now and then, depending on your goals, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but for like athletes, for power lifters, we're really not trying to grind on certain reps because we're trying to like make sure that we're explosive, getting out the hole on a squat, pulling quick from the ground on deadlifts, exploding off our chest on bench press, things like that. So the question becomes, in a program like mine where you have certain structured sets and reps, how does working to failure like work into that? Do you ever have to hit failure? And the reality is, guys, is technically you don't. And here's why you don't have to. Let's say it's a day where you're doing um, like sets of five on a movement, right? And you and you uh, you get three sets of five, right? And you get it really clean, really easy, no problem. And you bump the weight up next time. You get three sets of five once again. You do it again. You bump the weight up next time. But on this time around, you notice that on your last set, the weight, the, like you got all five reps, but the weight didn't move quite as fast as you want. It wasn't a grind, but it wasn't quite as fast as you want. The point being, you realize, you now think that okay, if I increase this weight, I'm probably not gonna get all three sets of five. I can probably still get five like on the first set or so, but I may not get all three sets of five. And I don't want to I don't want to hit failure. Well the way you avoid that is simple guys. You can either stick with the same weight for a few more times. So keep in mind guys, you can do the same weight for about three sessions and still get benefit from it as far as like strength and muscle growth. Like because in actuality basically a lot of adaptation pretty much we've determined with that is that your body after three weeks of getting receiving the same stimulus, it no longer is gonna get any benefit or growth from that. So the reason I say three sessions, is because on a program like mine, where like Monday is different from Wednesday, Wednesday is different from Friday, well, three weeks would be like three Monday sessions, three Wednesday sessions. So after three weeks, you're really no longer gonna get stealing benefit from it, right? But the reality is after three weeks of doing the same weight and reps, you should be at the point where you're moving that with no problem. If you were able to get three sets of five the very first time you did it, but it wasn't quite as fast as you wanted, after doing that for two more weeks, you should have no issues with that. So that's one option. You stay with that same weight, right? And then once you get it, you should feel more than confident to go up to the next weight and still manage to get three sets of five, especially if you're only doing five extra pounds, right? You're, there should not be a complete form breakdown with only a five pound difference between say like 310 on squats and 315 on squats. The second option you can do, and you can do this whether you decide to stick with that weight for a bit longer or to go or to go to it, is that rather than trying to go for the three sets of five, you're not sure you can get it, see what you get on that first set. Say you do get the three sets of five, okay, no problem. And then you do your second set and you get, let's say you get four and you feel like, man, this fifth one might be a really, really hard grinder. You don't wanna go for it. Don't go for it. You got the four, right? Then do your third set, same thing. Fill out the reps that you know you can get. Let's say you get to four again, then stop there. That's still progressive overload because you increase the weight. But the way it's working is that instead of just automatically going for three sets of five, you're gonna build the reps up over time. So you increase the weight. You got five on the first set. You got four on the second and four on the third. So the next time you come in there, fill it out again and try to build the reps up from there. And then once you get all three sets of five, you bump the weight again. So with this method, you don't have to necessarily hit failure by any means. Now, sometimes 
you may hit failure to see exactly what you can do in a given set and then you go from there. Give you guys a perfect example. If you guys remember the last strength intensity day that I showed you guys when I was doing bench press and Chris was spotting me, I managed to get three on that first set, right? And it wasn't like, it wasn't the easiest trip on the first set, but I felt like, okay, that, that felt pretty good. I think I'm good to go on the second set. So on the second set, I got the first two reps and then I wasn't sure on the third. I'm like, okay, I may or may not get this, but I'm not positive. I'm not sure if it'll be a real hard grind or not. So I went for it and I didn't get it. So from that point, I did hit failure, right? But what did I do from that point? I adjusted, so on that third set, I just went for two reps because I was positive that I could get the two reps rather than trying to push for the third one anyway because there would be no point since I knew I wasn't going to get it or if I did it would have been a really really hard grind. So that's a great example of how you go about that. So I'm now at 320 pounds on bench press and I've gotten it for three, two, two. Same thing this past month. I did it again for three, two, two, but it felt a little, it felt a little bit easier, especially on that second set. It felt like the, like I could have probably gotten one more, but I still kept three, two, two. So what I'm going to do next week is probably go for three, three, two. See, I'm building it up gradually and and that's the whole point, guys. If you build it up gradually, if you take your time with the weight, you'll be fine. I don't believe you should ever increase the weight. First of all, if even if you get all sets and reps, if your form wasn't on point, because the reality is, guys, that's still progression in of itself. For example, let's say that you're doing squats, right? And on your last set, on the second or third rep, you didn't quite hit depth. Like you got all three reps, but you didn't quite hit depth, so you didn't quite complete the form. Well, doing that weight again, but going below parallel is still progress. Why? We're going through a longer range of motion, so you make your muscles do a little bit more work in that way. And the reality is, is that going through a longer range of motion is harder, so you're still pushing yourself a little bit more than what you did last time. And once you get comfortable with that, then you can increase the weight and feel confident to know that, okay, I'm still gonna be able to maintain form. So the point is, guys, is whether you should train to failure or not, it's pretty much dependent upon your goals and what you're doing. It's okay, like I said, if you're working with six reps or more and you hit failure, you're inducing metabolic fatigue, that's okay. But whenever we're working with more mechanical tension, like five reps and below, you have to understand that hitting failure on that can greatly hinder your recovery just as far as your nervous system. And then you just don't wanna train your body to move extremely heavy weight very slowly because you wanna have some form of explosiveness with it, right? If it's, you know, obviously if you're training strictly for strength versus power, there's a difference. You still want the strength rest to be smooth. They may not be quite as explosive as the power ones, but you still want them to be a slow, gradual grind, right? Now, if you are saying, well, I'm just trying to go slow for like time and tissue or whatever, well, that's what you use the lighter weight for. That's what the volume day is for, where you're working with six plus reps because you can afford to do that. But the point is, regardless, guys, of whether you're, you know, trained to failure or not, you still have to have some structure to it. Just coming in, taking random exercises, doing as much as you can, isn't really going to get you anywhere because you're not keeping track of anything. You're just going until, like, and I've used this example before. Let's say you come in, you grab some some dumbbells, and you just do as many curls as you can, right, until you feel the burns. Like, oh, I can't do anymore, and you stop. And then you come in again another day and you do the exact same thing right but you didn't track it you have no clue how much you did last time and you feel that burn that same threshold so you're like oh i can't do it when you stop but it turns out you did the exact same amount of reps with the same amount of weight as you did last time when you could have maybe gotten out one or two more reps you didn't progressively overload so even though yes you can probably do that same weight and reps for you know three more sessions or three more weeks and get benefit you're gonna eventually get to the point where you're not getting any stronger because of the law of adaptation where you're getting too used to the stimulus like i said a lot of people take the law of adaptation meaning that they have to constantly switch exercises all the time that's not necessarily the case guys a lot of adaptation just means you can't give your body the same stimulus over and over which means that you can break through that law simply by increasing the weight, doing an extra rep, doing an extra set. There's lots of different ways to, you know, work around a lot of adaptation. But that's pretty much how that works, guys, as far as like, so what do I do on a program where it's like, it's not based off percentages or it's not based off RPE, it's just like, you know, structured sets, reps, and microloading. What do I do in order to avoid working to failure? Well, it's understanding that depending on the context, if we're working to failure in the sense of, hey, I'm kind of filling this weight out to see what I can do with it, that's one thing. That's not necessarily true failure, because you're not just going in there trying to fail on every set and rep you like maybe you failed on your second or third set because you thought i could get that last rep but you weren't sure but now you know so now adjust accordingly for that next rep and now you know for your next session what to do that's not the same thing as coming in and trained to failure every single session you're not going to get the same detrimental effects and in the same way guys it's understanding that if you do hit failure like i said in the higher rep threshold that's okay if your goal was three sets of 15 you got 15 12 10 that's okay just keep gradually filling the reps up and once again once you get all three sets of 15 bump the weight and start over again because failing due to metabolic fatigue isn't as detrimental as failing when it comes to um 
mechanical tension. But once again, you don't ever have to train a failure, guys, in the sense of if you, if, let's say even with the higher thresholds, you get 15, and then you, on that second set, you, you like, you get the 10th one, you're like, hmm, I can maybe squeeze out another one or two, but I think it's gonna be hard, so then you don't do it, so you just stop at 10. Then the third set, you do another set of 10. That's okay, same thing. You can just build the reps up gradually until you did get all three sets of 15. It's just understanding that whether you, um, got 15, 10, 10 because you couldn't do any more than 15, 10, 10, or whether you got 15, 10, 10 because you decided you didn't want to go to failure and you just want to build the reps up gradually, either way is going to be fine in that instance. The times that you really want to avoid training to failure is like I said, when you're in that five rep range and below. And like I said, the, the, um, the only exceptions being like, hey, you got five on the first set, you thought you could get five on the second one, but you only got four, that's okay, because you, you thought you had the five, you're just testing it out. You're not gonna lose all your gains because you hit failure on that second set. Just adjust accordingly for that last set. And then the next time you come in and do that same weight, fill it out to know what you can do. If you got five, four, four, and it was tough, come in and do it again, five, four, four. Then come in and do it a third time if you need to, five, four, four, and go for that next rep when you can do so with confidence. That's the thing, you're gonna eventually have to try to go for the next rep, right? And if you do get all three sets of five and you do it like three times, you're going to have to eventually bump up the weight. But once you do, don't feel like you have to automatically get all sets of five when you increase the weight. It's okay. You don't have to. Maybe get five on that first set, fill out how you do on the second and third, and just build it up gradually from there. That's it, guys. It's, it's, not, it's not something that's like gonna necessarily make or break you as long as you're not going to extremes with it. Don't be one of these people who's dogmatic and says, oh, don't ever train to failure. Training to failure is training to fail. It's not, it's not true. And don't also don't be one of these people who thinks that you have to train to failure to grow. You could never train to failure another day in your life. And so long as you're progressively overloading, gradually doing a little bit more each time, you will still get bigger. You will still get stronger. That's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment down below. Let me know that you did. If you did not enjoy it, leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to get better. Like the video. Really, really, I'm serious, guys. Like, please, like the video. It helps the channel grow. It helps more people see this video. Share, subscribe. Keep it simple, specific, scientific. I'll catch y'all later. I am the greatest.